Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk mountain weather and ski conditions. And we'll start off with Loveland, where it is sunny right now. We're waiting on that storm system in Colorado, but right now it is sunny. And I think Loveland is one of the places that will do very well from this large storm that will move in over the weekend, thinking probably two feet, maybe even a little over two feet. I'll have those numbers. In fact, we'll zoom right into Colorado uh, coming up. But right now, we've had a great day down in Arizona at uh, Snowball. Let's go right to the, uh, the radar and satellite for this analysis. Snowballs, uh, they're saying 17 inches so far, and it's still snowing down there. Great day. Um, also seeing snow in Brian Head. They'll get several inches out of this, and some of this may very well end up brushing just barely parts of the Wasatch and certainly the High Uintas and the LaSalle's, but we'll look at all that. The real game, let me just kind of zoom out and tilt this down so you can kind of see the low here spinning just south of uh, Las Vegas. There it is. So eventually what's going to happen here is this, um, let me just mark it. So this area of low pressure that's spinning right here will have to move towards Albuquerque. And then that's going to be a critical moment, right? So what happens with the low? Typically, this is, this is what happens. We'll get the hook pattern. And that's what we're banking on at this point, that hook pattern. And then that's going to wrap all that big moisture and those, those upslope winds into Colorado and slam it up against the terrain features there, which is the orographic component of all of this. That's what we're banking on. Now, if there's even a slight shift in that track, that will affect the snow mounts. So let's look at the jet stream. You can see the dip over uh, Las Vegas. That's supporting the low pressure. Now, as we look at the future, that will then carry that low. You can see it into New Mexico, into Albuquerque, and by the time we get into Sunday morning, we're probably at the peak of the upslope of the, the, just the wind driving that moisture and that snowfall in Colorado. So here's what I'm talking about. Look at the three. Look at this jet stream level wind cruising back and just firing right up against. It's just. I'll put the arrow on it so you can see it. It's coming around. And that is going to help to really drive that snow all the way down, in fact, to mountaintop levels in Colorado. And that's going to drive some of those bigger totals um, in the state of Colorado. So that is Sunday in the morning. That's probably the height of the storm in Colorado Sunday morning. But then it continues to snow most of the day, in fact, because the jet stream will not carry the low away until potentially Monday morning. And even on Monday morning, there's probably going to be some wraparound snows in Colorado, but it'll be a much lighter intensity at that point as the winds have backed or turned in the state and will start to switch things off and dry things out. But that is the jet stream by uh, Monday morning. So let's look at the uh, the future radar and the, the satellite. So what will happen is between today and um, Saturday morning the low will come out uh, and moving through Arizona and then eventually it starts to cross into uh, New Mexico. Let's move this forward into Saturday morning. All right, so here we go. Here comes the, uh, the low, and notice where the snow is. It's brushing the Wasatch. It's moving and hitting the, uh, the LaSalle's, the High Uintas, and we're just starting to see some very light activity in Colorado, but that's, that's all pre-storm. We're really waiting on the low to move into New Mexico and sit on that, the, in that, that Albuquerque low position. So that's Saturday morning at 5. All right, let's move into Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, and Sunday morning here on the clock. And notice then we start to establish the pipeline of moisture. There it is. You see, this is, this is when things really start to get interesting. Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Look at the rich flow coming out of the Gulf and the winds just carrying all that moisture, slamming it up against the foothills and the high mountains of Colorado, right on the Continental Divide and then tilting down east. That's where we're going to see some of the biggest totals, but it will also be snowing over the southern mountains, the sand grays of Colorado, I-70, and even the northern mountains. And not to leave out Wyoming, we will see heavy snow in south and southeast parts of Wyoming as well. You can see the deep blues up there on future radar, and it's still there. Sunday morning, this is probably the max for snow production in the state of Colorado at this point. And for that matter, south and southeast Wyoming getting nailed. Um, I mean, you can just see the flow just or graphically speaking, maximizing at that Sunday morning time frame. So between Sunday, Sunday, this is Sunday at 5 p.m., it's still snowing in Colorado, and then we turn the intensity down. We ratchet it down Sunday night into Monday morning as the low moves away. You can see the lighter blues. This is all very much just wraparound moisture in Colorado by Monday morning at a lower intensity, but still snowing. Also of note, look at California. Next storm comes in Sunday night, Monday, so good snow taking shape right there. 
from Shasta down to uh, Tahoe and then also moving into the Mammoth area. So there's something else coming in for that area. Now, as far as accumulations go, between uh, today, tonight, and Saturday morning, only light accumulations, it looks like at this point, you can see a little bit extra in Bryan Head up to Kings Peak, but very light accumulations. The real stuff comes in Saturday, especially Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, and Sunday morning. So we'll roll the clock ahead and stop it on Sunday morning at five, and look at the numbers tick up. Now, anytime you see the magenta on this, that's over a foot, so a foot plus, and a lot of that has occurred. Look at Loveland, working on two feet, working on it by Sunday morning. Cameron Pass, same thing. And yeah, there is going to, and we'll talk more about this, spillover effect in Colorado, but so this is by Sunday morning. Let's move into Sunday night and see what the totals look like here. By Sunday at 5 p.m., all of the numbers have gone up at this point, and we're reaching some of the totals in the state. Look at that Loveland, um, over two feet. Look at Cameron Pass working on 40 inches. I think Longs Peak and that district up there, you, you know, you're at four feet up there, if not 50 inches plus in some of these places. Kings Peak gets some wraparound. Look at Southeast, Southern and Southeast Wyoming getting nailed. So let's talk more about uh, the spillover effect in Colorado. And by that, I mean how much will go west of the Continental Divide into Summit County into Eagle County, into Grand County. That's a whole other topic with some uncertainty, certainly even remaining at this point, but I think there is definitely going to be some spillover. So let's move into this map for Colorado, and you can kind of, then you'll be able to see um, what I'm talking about. So there's the I-70 corridor. There is the, the Front Range, uh, the high peaks, and uh, you can see how it tilts down. And again, anytime over you see the magenta, we're talking a foot plus in some of these areas. So there's your Loveland total at 29 inches. Um, I think that's definitely possible and you know not to exclude a basin is also in the mix running right up and uh, north towards Cameron Pass on the Continental Divide tilting down. Longs Peak 45 to 50 inches. Absolutely possible. Red Feather to Cameron Pass 45 to 50 to 55 inches. So you're talking four to five feet of snow that's where I think the bullseye is going to be, right up there in the northern mountains, right in those foothills of Boulder and Lamar counties up there. Um, and th there you can see as I kind of run that arrow up, it's right along that arrow and then tilting down where we're going to see some of the biggest totals in Colorado. Um, so the spillover effect, how much spills over here into some at Grand and Eagle counties? I think some. I think 8 to 16 inches is probably a very good bet from Steamboat, Buff Pass, down to Vail, down to Beaver Creek, maybe a touch more at Copper, but I really, even at Breck, you might even have a little more spillover, but 8 to 16 I think is a pretty good, uh, pretty good bet in a lot of those areas. But again, you have to climb up to the divide and tilt down east to get the biggest totals. All right, so there's the latest thinking on my part. I always appreciate you tuning in here. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care.